Hey everybody, Angel Abbey here, and I'm the volunteer coordinator here at Columbia Animal Services. On behalf of the entire CAS team, I want to extend a warm welcome and to thank you also for your interest in our program. Although Columbia Animal Services has always had an active volunteer program, it has grown exponentially in the last 12 months. This orientation will get you acquainted with our shelter and show you how we go about doing things. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Thank you. Columbia Animal Services Volunteer Orientation. Welcome to the possibilities. We appreciate your interest in volunteering your time and energy to help advance animal welfare and enrichment at Columbia Animal Services. This volunteer orientation will introduce you to the shelter, guidelines for volunteers, and the volunteer opportunities currently available. While this information will get you started volunteering with us, some volunteer jobs and opportunities will require further training. Volunteering at CAS. Our volunteer program is aimed toward bettering the life of our shelter animals. Volunteers help provide enrichment, comfort, and care, along with giving our shelter animals a voice. Our program provides opportunities for people to interact with animals at the shelter. Our volunteers help provide meaningful insight regarding the personality and the behavior of the animal, which is beneficial in finding that animal a forever home. In the shelter world, there's never enough time or enough people. Volunteers are essential in ensuring our shelter runs smoothly and that our animals get the best possible care and quality of life. CAS history, where it all began. Step back into the early 1970s, where the shelter's roots were planted in the original green floored section. Nestled near Hugie Street, it started small, manned by a team of just 12, including a vet and four ACOs. Fast forward to 2000 and 2009, it witnessed the shelter's growth spurt. The main lobby, adoption halls, and even a garage sprouted up to accommodate the ever-expanding family and the continuous partnerships with Richland County to shelter its animals. Picture the surrender lobby, once the bustling heart of the shelter. City staff shared the desk with the Humane SPCA and the old U.S. Post Office housed offices in a, a spay-neuter clinic until its dramatic end in 2015. Now journey to the shelter's backside where a barn and a pond hold tales of bygone children's barnyard. It all began with the rescue of Noel, Columbia's Christmas pony, leading to a makeshift family of horses, donkeys, pigs, and even a tame deer. A barn crafted by volunteers in an old fashioned barn raising stood tall until it was condemned and torn down. In the animal influx of 2008, 2009, the shelter welcomed nearly 14,000 creatures. But then, a change swept through the community. Spay-neuter efforts, spurred by the free and low-cost vouchers of the Animal Mission since 2006, slashed the intake to a more manageable 5,000 animals annually. The once daunting euthanasia rate plummeted from 80% to less than 20%. Turn the pages to 2015 and witness the birth of a collaboration. Columbia Animal Services joined forces with local animal welfare groups in a Blue Ribbon Committee recognizing a shared challenge in the community, pet overpopulation. From that day forward, these groups continued their joint efforts, weaving a narrative of teamwork and success in the ongoing battle for our furry friends. Our supporters, in the years 2008-2009, the shelter received almost 14,000 animals. With aggressive spay-neuter efforts in the community, intake is now down to around 5,000 animals per year. Free and low-cost spay-neuter vouchers have been offered to Richland County citizens since 2006 from the Animal Mission, our sister organization. This has played a massive role in lowering our intake numbers. With these efforts and other life-saving programs, we have seen our euthanasia rate go from 80% to less than 20%. In 2015, Columbia Animal Services teamed up with a dozen other local animal welfare groups as part of a Blue Ribbon Committee. Today, their goal is to continue the efforts of reducing pet overpopulation and euthanasia for our community as a whole. General Information, Columbia Animal Services, 127 Humane Lane, Columbia, South Carolina, 29209. Phone number 803-776-7387. Hours of operation, Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sunday, closed. Adoptions. To be eligible to adopt an animal from CAS, 
you must be 18 years or older and have a valid state driver's license or ID. Fees. Dogs, puppies, cats, and kittens are $35. Annual licensing fee, $5. Only applies to animals 12 weeks of age or older for residents of Columbia. Kennel slip leash, $2. Leash, $10. Collar, $8. Cat carriers, $5. Adoption fee includes up-to-date vaccines for their age, spay or neuter surgery, flea and worm preventative, each animal is microchipped and registered to their adopter. Volunteer Policies and Procedures Volunteers ID All volunteers will receive a volunteer badge for identification purposes. Please wear your badge anytime you are representing the shelter as a volunteer. Attendance All volunteers are required to sign in upon arrival. The volunteer sign-in books are located in the volunteer room. Upon completion of service, please sign out. Making a conscious effort to this important detail will enable us to maintain accurate records for future grants. Signing up. We'll do our best to ensure you're interested in your task. However, the duties may vary depending on shelter needs. All duties will be listed on signup.com. Please sign up for tasks so staff and other volunteers are aware of who will be available to help. Staff only areas. Volunteers are to remain in designated areas unless specifically instructed otherwise by a volunteer coordinator, kennel manager, assistant superintendent, or superintendent. Do not enter the staff-only areas. Professional attitude. Volunteer must take their commitment seriously, agree to conduct themselves in a professional manner with the animals, co-volunteers, staff, and the public. Maintain a professional and positive attitude. Disparaging the organization or the staff will not be tolerated. This includes comments on social media. Keep all client data confidential. No names of clients are to be discussed outside of our organization. Be friendly, warm, and courteous to the public and put them at ease. Ask the staff for assistance with any questions to which you are not sure of the absolute correct answer. Protocol. Volunteer personal property. The Columbia Animals Shelter is not responsible for loss, theft, or damage of personal items. Volunteers are advised not to bring excessive amounts of cash or valuables with them. Lockers are available for volunteer use. Volunteers must apply their own lock and remove it after each shift. Dress code. Volunteers are required to be dressed appropriately to handle our, all our animals. Our dogs can be jumpy and scratch at legs and arms. Our dress code ensures that everyone is safe and comfortable. At CAS sponsored events, volunteers must remember they represent the shelter and maintain a professional appearance appropriate for a shelter volunteer. Volunteer identification must be worn at all times while at the shelter or any event. Wear comfortable clothes. Please remember that your clothes may get dirty or stained. Long pants are strongly suggested. Shorts and skirts must meet at or below the knee. Closed toe, rubber sole shoes are required. Flip flops or sandals are not allowed. Shirts must cover your stomach and have straps. Your shirt must meet the top of your pants. Volunteers who arrive in inappropriate attire will be asked to change their clothing prior to working with our animals. Remember your sunscreen and bug spray. Injuries. You are ultimately responsible for your health and welfare. Remember to read all signs and safety procedures. Wounds or bites should be washed well and treated with first aid as necessary. A first aid kit is located in the volunteer room and behind the front desk. If injury warrants, the volunteer should be directed to urgent care or 911 should be called. Bites. Anytime skin is broken by a tooth, it is considered a bite. According to state law, bites that break the skin must be reported to the city and the animal will be placed in quarantine or isolation for 10 days to observe any signs of rabies. The animal in question will not be punished for biting. Most are accidents, the dog playing rough, the cat getting overstimulated, etc. Injuries should be washed well and treated with first aid as necessary. The damage must be reported to a staff member immediately following first aid. A bite report must be completed. Dog volunteer opportunities. We understand how stressful the shelter environment may be on an animal. To help overcome this stress, the shelter depends on volunteers to come to the shelter and give the animals the extra attention needed to feel happy. We have five small play yards, a large enrichment sensory garden play yard, a volunteer play yard, an agility yard, 
a hiking trail, and a quiet lounge. Volunteers play a vital role in accomplishing this goal. Volunteers are encouraged to take dogs into yards to play, practice training games, and be brushed and loved on. The human interaction the dogs get through this volunteer socialization helps promote positive behavior and prevent depression in the animals. Dog Volunteer Program Doggy Day Out Doggy Day Out is a field trip program for our adoptable dogs at Columbia Animal Services. The goal is to get our long-term dogs out of the kennel to enrich their lives, showcase them to the community, and get more information about them while they are out. Slumber Buddies Slumber Buddies is a sleepover program for our adoptable dogs at Columbia Animal Services. The goal is to get our longer-term dogs out of the kennel to experience the comfort of a natural home, gain more information about their in-home behavior, and showcase how they may look and act in a home. Dog Enrichment our dog enrichment volunteers ensure that our shelter dogs receive in-kennel enrichment daily. Tasks include prepping frisbees, kongs, licky mats, boxes, and puzzle toys and distributing these items. Tasks include removing used enrichment item toys from a dog's kennel and washing them so that they can be prepped again. Dog grooming. Several of our dogs desperately need a bath and a trim when they arrive. Some also have a medical condition of the skin which required a unique bath regularly to help them heal. Volunteers are welcome to help in this department working with the dogs to prepare them for their spay, neuter, surgery, and adoption. Cat volunteer opportunities. Cats have specific needs that must be met to succeed in the shelter environment. We have a cat room filled with toys, treats, brushes, and windows to help meet these needs. Volunteers are encouraged to get cats out to play, be brushed, and be given treats and cuddled. In addition to the social mental wellness of cats, volunteers can also participate in the husbandry of the animals. This includes cleaning the cat's kennels, providing meals, updating information on all the animal's personality, and helping the staff to advocate for the animals to potential adopters. Cat whisperers, we need you. A shelter can be scary for cats with lots of noise and activity. Cat enrichment volunteers give extra love and attention to fearful felines, ensuring that they are in a clean and comfortable kennels. They also make sure rambunctious kittens get much needed exercise and toys. Other volunteer opportunities. Adoption meet and greet. Assist prospective adopters by bringing selected animals to the designated visitation areas and relaying any information that interested party needs to make an educated decision. Please ask for assistance for animals you may not feel comfortable with or information you are unsure of. Shelter beautification assistance. We always need your help with yard work, including flower planting projects, weeding, cutting back bushes, washing down outdoor dog meet and greet areas, picking up garbage, litter, and more. General cleaning, laundry, dishes. Keeping a clean, sanitary environment for our animals is important to us. Our staff cleans every animal's kennel every morning and provides them with the hygienic necessities. Our facility can benefit from volunteers to help with general cleanliness and upkeep, such as floors and windows. Additionally, we have laundry and dishes to be cleaned throughout the day. Foster parents. We are always in need of foster care providers. We rely on our fantastic network of foster care providers to help us rescue and care for animals. We place many dogs and cats in forever homes each year and hundreds of these animals get their start in our foster care program. We can house more adoptable animals through foster care and save more lives. Fostering an animal is a beautiful way to experience the joy of pet ownership for those who cannot permanently commit to an animal. Adoption Ambassador. The Adoption Ambassador program empowers foster parents to market and directly adopt out their foster dogs without the dog ever having to return to the shelter. By interacting with the dog daily, the foster can learn more about the animals and find the animal a suited home. Take Home Projects. Are you interested in helping the animals at Columbia Animal Shelter but you need service hours quickly or can't make regular commitments? There are still many ways you can help. We have projects that can be signed out, completed at home, and returned when finished. Projects can be brought back to the shelter anytime we are open. 
medical department. We are proud to have in-house medical suite that offers animals various medical needs. The medical department welcomes volunteers to help prepare and recover animals for surgery, clean surgical equipment, and also keep medical area organized and tidy. Volunteers must be 18 years or older for this position. Group activities. CAS has very limited number of group volunteer opportunities. However, we can accommodate specific date requests with advance notice. The need for a larger group of volunteers all at once depends on greatly on the needs of our shelter operations. The size of your group and the time of the year will determine your volunteer activity. Group size is limited to a minimum of six people and a maximum of 25 people. Some activities include, but are not limited to, walking dogs, making enrichment treats or toys, and working on the enrichment garden. Tour training. Once applications have been received and approved, fosters will be contacted by the volunteer coordinator to set a tour date with one of our team leads. New volunteers will be partnered with experienced volunteers for on-the-job training. Over time, as formal training is being developed, all volunteers will be expected to go through retraining. Animal diseases. Diseases are common in the animal shelter environment. While it is uncommon for volunteers to come in contact with a sick animal, it can happen. Can my pets catch that for me? Please be sure to use caution after leaving the shelter and going home if you have any animals waiting on you. We recommend changing your clothing and washing up immediately after getting home and before interacting with any of your animals or even bringing a change of clothes and shoes to the shelter with you. While risk is low for vaccinated healthy pets at home, use extra precaution if you're going home to an elderly, sick, or unvaccinated pet. If your pet at home starts displaying any symptoms of illness, we recommend contacting your primary veterinarian. Zoonotic diseases. What is a zoonotic disease? A zoonotic disease is something that can be transmitted from animals to human beings. Potential agents of zoonotic disease include fungi, bacteria, viruses, parasites, and anthropods. Types of zoonotic diseases include, but are not limited to, the list below. The most effective means of preventing the spread of zoonotic disease is to wash your hands frequently with antibacterial soap or hand sanitizer, especially after handling any animals prior to eating. Wear proper PPE, such as gloves when cleaning. Immediately disinfect scratches and bite wounds. The elephant in the room, euthanasia. Although difficult to accept, euthanasia is what happens to unwanted surplus of animals in shelters around the country. There are millions of homeless animals due to purposeful and accidental breeding, poor planning and decisions around obtaining a pet and a lack of training and commitment from pet owners. CAS believes euthanasia is not a desirable solution to our community's pet overpopulation problem. Instead, we strive to provide programs that address our commitment to solving these issues that necessitate killing homeless and unwanted animals. These include low-cost spaying and neutering of animals for residents, humane education in schools, and various other programs. Unfortunately, this does not mean we don't perform euthanasia at CAS. Animals that are deemed unadoptable to illness or behavior issues are euthanized. Color coding system for CAS. Things that influence how easy a dog is to handle include pulling on a leash, jumping up, ease of getting on and off leash, reactivity towards other dogs, ease of getting in and out of kennel, things that include how easy a cat is to handle, catnip, ease of getting in and out of kennel, reactivity towards dogs and cats, overstimulation by being handled too much, etc. Each volunteer will receive a green, blue, red, or black colored lanyard. The volunteer can interact with animals whose cage cards bear a matching colored dot and check mark. The volunteers can take those eligible animals for walks, doggy day out, and slumber buddies. All volunteers start at the level green and can reach levels blue, red, and black after meeting specific qualifications. What is color coding? Color coding is simply how easy or difficult a dog or cat is to interact with. It says nothing about how nice a dog or cat is or whether he or she would make a good pet. It also allows staff to identify volunteer levels of training. 
Green Level Complete Volunteer Orientation Tour Body Language Presentation Enrichment Take Dogs Out of Shelter Premise Dishes Laundry Doggy Day Out Slumber Buddies Leveling to Blue Have all of the above completed plus have 10 hours in-house volunteering Assist a trainer for two hours Complete Bite Safety Presentation Complete Playgroup Presentation All of the above Playgroup for Approved Dogs Vet Clinic Leveling to Red Have all of the above completed plus have 20 hours in-house volunteering Assist a trainer for four hours total All of the above Dog and Cat Test Color Code High Priority Task on an As Needed Basis Leveling to Black Have all of the above completed 40 hours of in-house volunteering Assist a trainer for 6 hours total with trainer Nominated by volunteer coordinator All of the above Team lead Can do all of the above Mentor incoming volunteers Give volunteer tour Lead on specific area with volunteer program Green dogs Easy peasy Easy to leash Easy to walk past other dogs in their runs. Jumping up, big dogs, minimal or gentle. Small dogs, minimal to moderate. Pulling on leash, a small person of average strength and little experience could control. Green cats, easy peasy. Easy going, friendly with everyone and most likely other animals. Easy to train, would be a good match for a first time cat volunteer or inexperienced volunteer. Blue dogs, not quite mellow. More difficult to leash because they are never still or is hesitant about being leashed. Tries to get to the other dogs, is hard to get out of the kennel. Jumping up, big dogs, moderate and hard to control, but won't knock you over. Small dogs, very inconsistent and bouncy. Pulling on leash, requires strength and skill to walk, but won't pull a person of average size or strength off their feet. Blue cats. Still friendly, but may have a mild quirk or two that needs to be worked on to become easy peasy. May have to go over some training techniques to ensure success. Volunteer may or may not be experienced depending on the issue. With minor work, can become green. Red dogs, difficult to leash. Bites at leash, tries to evade leash by jumping, pawing, escaping, or won't approach front of run and must be noosed. Very difficult to keep from approaching other dogs, sometimes in an antagonizing way when taking out. Jumping up is very forceful, could injure or knock over an unprepared person. Pulling on leash, person of average size and strength could be knocked over. Red cats, mild aggression or unpredictable behavior but not dangerous, may be severely under socialized, may not do well with other cats or animals, needs a very experienced volunteer or one that does not mind an antisocial, independent cat. Uncoated dogs. Dogs that have not been evaluated are not yet up for adoption, five to 14 day hold, or are under quarantine. Also, dogs that have been evaluated but are not safe for volunteers to handle, aggressive or feral dogs, for instance, or cannot be leashed or walked due to injury. Uncoated cats. Cats that have not been evaluated are not yet up for adoption, five to 14 day hold, or are under quarantine. Also, cats that have been evaluated, but are not safe for volunteers to handle. Aggressive or feral cats, for instance, or cannot be handled due to injury. Removing a dog from their kennel. Let's get a dog out of their kennel. As you approach the kennel, you can toss some treats inside. Some dogs may not eat the treats right away, but that's okay, they can always get them when they come back. Hold your leash in one hand and work to unlock the kennel with your other one. Once the kennel is unlocked, use your foot to hold it closed as you work to get the dog leashed. Hold the slip lead near where the dog's head is. Once the dog's head is lined up, remove your foot from the kennel door and let them run through. Most dogs will come out of their kennel very quickly and may pull towards the other dogs. Do your best to keep them in the middle of the hallway as far away from the other dogs as possible. Safely walking a dog through the shelter. As you walk the dog through the shelter, we recommend same side handling, keeping the dog on the same side of your body that you're holding the leash with. Hold the dog on a short leash and close to your side, but allow room for a small amount of slack. While we want the dog to be on a short leash and close to us, we do not want to be pulling upwards on their leash. 
When positioning your body, think about tightening your core and squeezing your elbows into your ribs. Remember that these dogs can be really strong and you want a strong posture when handling them. Do your best to keep the dog that you're walking as far away from the other dogs as possible, whether these other dogs are in a kennel or on a leash. Here, I moved my dog from my right side to my left to keep her as far away from these kennels as possible. Returning a dog back to their kennel. When it's time to put your dog back into their kennel, before you enter the kennel room, you're going to want to switch your dog back to a regular slip lead if you did use a harness wrap. As you enter and walk through the kennel room, do your best to keep your dog close to you and continue using your same side handling. Ensure your dog is secure in their kennel and that their kennel door is mostly shut prior to taking off the slip lead. This is important because many dogs will try to quickly move out of their kennel and get away from you as you're trying to put them back in. Scattering treats in your dog's kennel or giving them an enrichment item will aid in getting them back in. Once your dog is in the kennel and the kennel door is mostly shut, you can take off the slip lead, then fully close and secure the door. Using a harness lead. A harness leash looks just like a regular slip lead. However, it has three stoppers and a hole that helps us convert the slip lead into a harness. The stoppers work to stop the leash from tightening too tight on the dog's neck. However, if I am planning to use this leash to take a dog out, prior to doing so, I will ensure that the first stopper is moved down so the leash has the ability to tighten on the dog's neck so they can't slip out of it after I put it on. When it's time to get the dog out of the kennel, I'll use the leash like any other slip lead, looping the hole over the dog's head. One option is to stop at the door that leads out of the kennel room to convert the slip lead into a harness. To do this, I'll use treat scatters to keep the dog calm and busy. While the dog finds the treats, I'll work to adjust the stoppers so they fit loosely at the bottom of the dog's neck. Once they're set, I'll wrap the harness under the dog's armpits. Go in the direction of the stoppers so the two stoppers form a V. The dog finished the treats, so I tossed another scatter, then worked to string the leash through the hole. Pull the stoppers through the hole first, then pull the rest of the leash through. I finish by securing the final stopper right above the hole. Another option is to take the dog to a secure yard to convert the leash into a harness. After the dog is in the yard, I take the leash completely off, then I work to adjust those first two stoppers. Once again, I want the stoppers to sit loosely at the bottom of the dog's neck. I take my best guess and know that I can always adjust it later if it's too tight or too loose. I fill my hand with treats, string it through the loop, and use it to guide the dog's head in. I then do a treat scatter to keep the dog busy while I work to finish putting on the harness. I wrap the leash under the dog's armpits, going in the direction so the stoppers form a V, then I finish stringing the rest of the leash through the hole, going under, not over, and always putting the stopper through first. Finishing off, I'll secure that last stopper right above the hole in the harness. Questions, concerns. Your point of contact regarding volunteering or shelter activities is the volunteer coordinator. Please don't hesitate to bring any concerns, questions to them first. If you have a complaint regarding a staff member or CAS policy, bring it to the attention of the volunteer coordinator to be resolved. We want to resolve issues so that we can work effectively as a team. Immediately report anything you interpret as harassment from the staff, volunteers, or the public to the volunteer coordinator or superintendent to ensure your safety and the safety of everyone on the premises.